This is section 57 of Mark Twain's Speeches by Mark Twain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Authors Club by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. Address at the dinner given in honor of Mr. Clemens. London, June, 1899. Mr. Clemens was introduced by Sir Walter Besant. It does not embarrass me to hear my books praised so much. It only pleases and delights me. I have not gone beyond the age when embarrassment is possible, but I have reached the age when I know how to conceal it. It is such a satisfaction to me to hear Sir Walter Besant, who is much more capable than I to judge of my work, deliver a judgment which is such a contentment to my spirit. Well, I have thought well of the books myself, but I think more of them now. It charms me also to hear Sir Spencer Walpole deliver a similar judgment, and I shall treasure his remarks also. I shall not discount the praises in any possible way. When I report them to my family, they shall lose nothing." There are, however, certain heredities which come down to us, which our writings of the present day may be traced to. I, for instance, read the Walpole letters when I was a boy. I absorbed them, gathered in their grace, wit, and humor, and put them away to be used by and by one does that so unconsciously with things one really likes i am reminded now of what use those letters have been to me they must not claim credit in america for what was really written in another form so long ago they must only claim that i trimmed this that and the other and so changed their appearance as to make them seem to be original you now see what modesty I have in stock. But it has taken long practice to get it there. But I must not stand here talking. I merely meant to get up and give my thanks for the pleasant things that preceding speakers have said of me. I wish also to extend my thanks to the Authors' Club for constituting me a member, at a reasonable price per year, and for giving me the benefit of your legal adviser. I believe you keep a lawyer. I have always kept a lawyer, too, though I have never made anything out of him. It is service to an author to have a lawyer. There is something so disagreeable in having a personal contact with a publisher, so it is better to work through a lawyer, and lose your case. I understand that the publishers have been meeting together also, like us, I don't know what for, but possibly they are devising new and mysterious ways for remunerating authors. I only wish now to thank you for electing me a member of this club. I believe I have paid my dues, and to thank you again for the pleasant things you have said of me. Last February, when Rudyard Kipling was ill in America, the sympathy which was poured out to him was genuine and sincere, and I believe that which cost Kipling so much will bring England and America closer together. I have been proud and pleased to see this growing affection and respect between the two countries. I hope it will continue to grow, and, please God, it will continue to grow. I trust we authors will leave to posterity, if we have nothing else to leave, a friendship between England and America that will count for much. I will now confess that I have been engaged for the past eight days in compiling a publication. I have brought it here to lay at your feet. I do not ask your indulgence in presenting it, but for your applause. Here it is. Since England and America may be joined together in Kipling, may they not be severed in Twain. End of Authors Club by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman.